This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. Oh, I'm joined by Dave Caldwell over Zoom. Dave, it's good to see you. It's been a while. How are you? How is love treating you? I'm very good, thanks, mate. How's yourself? I'm good, thank you. I think I've just caught up with whatever this current lurgy is that's going around. So just trying to get past that for the next few days. But other than that, all is well. Um, yeah, how's things looking with you? How's everybody in the gym doing? Good. Uh, just actually, probably about half an hour ago, got back from um, Manchester. I was up at Jamie Moore's gym. Uh, Stephen Cairns sparring uh, up there, along with Lerone as well. Lerone getting some rounds up there as well. So, yeah, we've had some uh, good work today. It was good, always good to see Jamie and, and Nige. Um, all the lads in the gym, you know, it's, it's just a good crack. So, yeah, good, good trip. Just as a starting point, Dave, because I haven't caught up with you since Lerone rejoined the gym. Um, what what was the, the case with that? How did that all come about for Lerone to return? I just got a phone call asking, um, would I have a chat with him about uh, about a, a return back? Um, me and Lerone have always got on. Um, when there was no fallout, nothing no little comments here or there after he left or anything. And, you know, there was nobody more more gutted than what I was when, when he got beat. Um, so, yeah, he, uh, I agreed to have a chat with him and we had a chat. And, um, yeah, it's the same as anything. If I like you, yeah, you know, I want to help you. And, you know, if I can, then I'll do my best. That defeat obviously came as a shock. And to, at the time, he was always somebody who was struggling to get the types of fights that he wanted. Now he's, been set back a little bit further how difficult of a position is he in Dave what's the the plan or the hope in terms of trying to progress and guide his career um well he's gonna he's gonna fight on December 15th on the show uh just to get out just get back in back in the run of things um and then next year we just hope to push on and get in listen he's, he's moving up to light every week I don't think he had any business staying at Super Middleweight after the last time we worked together was was it was supposed to be that Chelly fight um, where he ended up collapsing in his hotel room and, and passing out. Um, so I've always said I don't think he, he should be boxing at Super Middleweight since then and I was surprised when he boxed at Super Middleweight in the fight where he got beat. I was like, because that was like a couple of years later, you know, a year or 18 months or whatever it is later after he it put in fact a couple of years. Um and I was like, well, he's older. He's surely not going to be able to do that way. And when I, you know, we saw him on the scales and we we in the gym we were talking about his his actual condition and his, his definition. He did you know it, it, as you get older, it, it's always going to be hard to make a weight that you've been making for years. Um so the natural thing is for him to move to light every weight and that's what he is doing. Um, next year, we want to get in the mix with the, you know, the, the, the some of the big fights that light everweight. Um, you know, there's uh, not calling them out, but domestically, light everweight's a strong division. It's a good division. It's an exciting division where there's 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 some good fights to be made. Um, and Lerone is a name. You know, um, everybody's lauding the IBO world title at the moment. Lerone was IBO world champion a couple of years back, um, beating Carl Got Carlos Gongora it was a you know a very very good fighter. Obviously, you know, he, he, maybe now people look at him and say, oh, he's beatable. He's chinny. We can go and, you know, can do a job on him. Um, so hopefully that leads to some fights. But under no illusions, it's a, it, it's a it, it, listen, if I wanted an easy job to as a coach and, and you know, to take a slot in the gym and um, easy job, big money, then it, it wouldn't be, you know, Having their own back, yeah, it was it was it was difficult. Not in terms of coaching him; he's very very coachable, and and I, I enjoy that. But the the business side of things of working with Lerone was always difficult when he was playing. Um, now I, I understand what it is, but you know, he's he's I, I think a lot about the kid. He's asked for me help, and and I'll, I'll help him the best way that I can. Dive away from Lerone, obviously Dan Tarrod returns on Friday night. Um yep. what what's the hope? What's the expectation for his next outing? Um just progression. He's four and oh. He's a baby, you know, he's four and oh. Um he's very, very new to the pro game. He's developing really well. Um his IQ's increasing week on. Um 
sparring's been great. Uh, and it's just talent. He's a very good fighter. Very, very good fighter. Um, he's exciting. He's very spiteful as well. Um, yeah, I think the fans are going to love him. As he progresses as well, more and more eyes are on him. I think the fans are really, really going to get behind him. You know, I know, you know, he's, he's well thought of in the northeast. But as as the rest of the boxing fans get to see more of this kid, he's he's you know he's he's very quiet and very humble and is a is a you know a, a typical working class class lad in terms of his personality. He's not you know brash or anything like that. But then when he gets in the ring. Something, something changes in him. You know, he's, he's flash. He's, uh, he's spiteful, like I said. He's completely different to what he is out, out of the ring. Um, he's, but he's, he's a, he, can, he can fight. And he's a very good, very good boxer. And you can, anybody that's sparred with him will tell you he's very, very good. Um, you know, he's adapting to the program really well. But he's, he is 4 0. So I just want progression in this fight. We've got, you know, got a decent opponent again. He's never fought anyone that's not got a winning record. Which you know it says something about himself and what you know um, myself and and Sam Jones think of him. Um, but yeah, he's a baby, and I just want people to get behind him and watch and enjoy the the development of this kid because I think he's going to be special. He's got he's got he's got attributes that lend himself to to be able to say that this kid has the potential to be special. Not just good; he's good now. You know, he's very good now at four and zero, but the kid could could go to be, you know, very, very, very good. Just away from um, Dan, I'm sure you tuned into all of the boxing over the past weekend. Dave, interest, get your thoughts on some of it. Let's just start off with Friday night. Um, yeah, a, a main event which very quickly for most probably became a, a tough watch. What did you make uh, of Jake Paul and the ring return of a legend in Mark Tyson? First of all, um, and it's not being wise after the event, I, I did a couple, a couple of interviews where, you know, my worry and my concern was that I couldn't see past this. Mike Tyson is 58 years old. And, it, you know, people are saying, yeah, but Jake Paul's this, Jake Paul's that. But for me, it wasn't about Jake Paul. It's about a 58-year-old man who was in a wheelchair and on a walking stick a few months back. And I said this. If you haven't got the legs to get yourself into distance, what good is it if you have lights out power? You know, we talk about, you know, the power being the last thing to go. But if you can't get yourself into a position to land that power and you're wearing 14 ounce gloves, remember that, then you're not going to have an impact on the fight. And, you know, I, I said before, and, you know, Jake will move around the ring and he'll stay out of the way of the power. And so it, it kind of unfolded how I expected it to. My worry was that Mike was going to end up getting stopped. I didn't want that to happen. Um, but how we ended up just being stood, literally stationary, stood in the middle of the ring while Jake's moving around, it was sad. It was so sad. And watching him when the bell goes, kind of like looking and then walking back to the corner, disconsolate and and sat on the stool, you know, um, I just found it extremely uncomfortable and sad. Um, uh, I've not watched the full fight. I've watched the highlights of the fight. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's Mike Tyson. Mike, Mike Tyson will always be that, that will always have that aura for me. Of my, you know, my, my, my image of him is the aura, is the eyes, is, is you know, the intimidation and the ferocious punching. Um, and he tried. He tried with head movement in the first round, you know, first 30 seconds, first minute or so. Um, but you can't keep that up when you ain't got legs and you're, and you're 58 years old. You know, I thought he did really well to get through the fight. Um, but the fight happened. If, if you expect it to be anything else, then... This is what I'm saying. You can't, you can't, can't moan and bitch about what you got because then you were living in that cloud cuckoo land yourself, you know, living in in the past sort of thing. You've got to see things for how they are. It doesn't matter if somebody's a name, and it doesn't matter if the opponent's got the limitations. It comes to a point where age will trump everything, and that's what you've got. You know, Jake Paul's not not a, a shit boxer. 
in terms of of you know he's he's, he's, he's dedicated his last few years to boxing he's learning his craft it's like anybody else that walks into a gym and starts learning boxing to take it seriously in four years time you can be you can be not bad you know and you'll probably be a guy that's that's nearing towards pension age you know and that's 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 realistic what it is it's different when you start talking about different levels but jake boxed well did what did what he had to do to be a 58 year old man so these aren't the fights i imagine ever materializing um when i think of jake paul but we've seen on social media arta better mentioned jake and apparently daniel Dubois reached out um over social media as well What do you make when you have such high-profile fighters like that trying to throw their hat into the ring almost to, to fight Jake? He's cocked the game. Jake Paul, hats off. Listen, I don't like the shit that comes out of his mouth when he talks about I'd beat any version of Mike Tyson. He said that in an interview. I'd beat any version of Mike Tyson. It's like, oh. I don't, I, because I'm not one of his YouTube subscribers and his fans that follow him for what he does outside boxing and so I've migrated to boxing and I don't know anything about boxing because I'm not one of those people. Those comments like that and he thinks he'll beat him and he'll beat him and he's the face of boxing and he's this. They're for those people to keep his... So everyone thinks, oh, look at Jake, he's gone into boxing, he's took over the world. And... Mm -hmm. But people in boxing, that'll irritate you Because it's like, oh. but you have to understand that it's it's his selling point. He's an unbelievable salesman. He's an unbelievable marketer, and and he's marketed himself fucking to the position where he has got professional boxers that are at the top of the game. Arta BF, elite, undisputed. Daniel Dubois coming off the biggest win of his career, an outstanding year of his career, and he's got a he, he's got a version of a, a the heavyweight title, and he's definitely one of the hottest prospect, hottest commodities in heavyweight boxing right now. You've got these two guys fucking asking for a fight with you, and you've never beaten a a, a legit prospect or or real. Fucking professional fighter. He's caught the game. He's cracked it. I can't knock him. I can't knock him for it because if I had the potential to do that, if I could do that, I'd do the exact same thing. But he has and he's grafted at whatever it is that's made him what he is. I don't know his full background and shit like that. But whatever it is that he's set out to do in life, he's accomplished something that that that's brought him the financials and brought in the lifestyle that so many people would love to have. And it's put him into a position where he can walk into whatever he chooses to do and say, I'm going to fight him. I want to fight him. I want to fight him. Slag him off, slag him off. Slag him. And people are getting reactions and I'm talking, you're talking, everybody's talking about it. Whether you're slating him or not, whether it irritates you or not, He's, he's, his stock's just going up. If I could invest in, in, in shares in Jake Paul, I would have done because his stock's just going to go up and up and up. And the reason why he won't fight a Daniel Dubois or an Otterberg babe, is because then he'll get absolutely fucking wiped out and then his stocks will, will come down and it'll embarrass him to all his real fans. He won't embarrass... I don't think... He, I don't, they don't care that it embarrass the box himself with the boxing fans... Because they don't care about the boxing fans. It's not the boxing fans, really, that are gonna that are, that are gonna you know bring too much to the table for him. It's his it's his fan base that keeps subscribing, that keep you know that that paying what is what you know what he's earning. So I think it's more about he wouldn't want to embarrass himself in front of them. Oh, my opinion, your opinion, Frotch's opinion, Belly's opinion. Oh, he don't, he don't care, you know, not not really. Um, and it's yeah, honestly, when I saw Daniel Dubois' DM, I get it because Daniel, Berta BF, they're looking at the payday, the money and the numbers. It's not, not even just the payday, the numbers. It's on Netflix. 
a game you can't No, nobody else has managed to get boxing onto Netflix. That's yeah. Even before the fire, I was like, that is huge. That is unbelievable. I didn't quite expect it to get sixty million views, but I knew it was going to be the biggest we've seen. And you can't knock him. I was I was I was talking to I was, I was talking to Stephen Cairns earlier on, way back from sparring, and I, I remember I think I think we talk about the days of you know, ITV boxing and, and Nigel Ben fighting Eubank and I don't know, it got, you know, something like 16, 18, 19 million viewers and stuff like that. And we were like, oh, we, we, you know, we're not going to see that, them days again because of subscription TV and things like that, so many different channels and the boxing markets, the, the audience has got smaller and smaller now because there's so many different choices. This fucker's just gone onto Netflix and just done 60 million views or whatever it is. Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano has done, you know, 40, 50 million views. I can't knock it. I might not like the things that he's saying, like I said, but I respect the shit out of what he's doing because he's doing something that nobody thought we could do. We never... You can ask anybody in boxing. Tell me anybody that thought you'd see another Ben Eubank sort of audience on, on TV, you know, on those big numbers. Nobody. That, that, you know, nobody else thought that. So to get it on Netflix, whether it's him, his advisors, people around, whatever, whatever it is, that team to go down the Netflix route and it, you know, that, him now, he's the, he's the guy that everybody's talking about. It doesn't mean he's the best, but it means that, it means that he's, the guy that 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 you want to go to, if you want to get that exposure, if you want to get that paycheck, I understand. I understand, and 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 he's kind of he's he's gone against the grain. He's gone against the all, and he's done it his own way. And he still irritates a shy. And his brother's still a dickhead for what he said to Tyson in the ring. And it's the lack of respect and 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 things like that, and not not being in a real in a real world, you know. Um, but you have to respect what they've done and you have to look and say he's gone out there and done it so you can't knock it it's like it's like when people you can't be bitter about it you can't be bitter about his success because otherwise then when you're in a position where you're doing something doing well and then you see people that aren't in your position slagging you off you say you you say the thing you, you, you know you, you you're being bitter because you're not you're not doing that you're, so then you can't just because somebody else is doing stuff that you never thought of or never went out and did, you can't be bitter because of the success. You can, like I said, you can not like what they're doing, but you've got to go, you know what? Fucking hell, fair play. And that's what I said. Fair play is he's, he's, he's caught the game, it really has. So you don't think the viewers um, stay tuned to see Mr. Mark Tyson's backside then? Yeah, of course he's. Yeah, everybody needs a dance partner. Everyone needs a dance partner. I don't think they're tuning to see his backside, <laughs> but yeah, it weren't, weren't it? yeah. Uh, I seen, I seen that. Um, you need a dance partner, obviously, obviously. But it's it's just proven that really it that was that was that. Uh, did anybody in boxing think that that was like? A legit dance partner. No, apart from the name, no. But every everybody, everybody kind of watched it, didn't they? Whether you watched it live or you watched it later, like me, it, it doesn't matter. If you got up or you watched it after, you watched it. You want to see what you know. What you want us to see it, and is it, I'm not saying he'll get sixty million against a normal name, but my point is, is he's used Tyson. He's got the views, the intrigue and the whole thing, because it's Mike Tyson, he's got the views. And now he's got every fighter wanting to fight him. And the more legit the fighters are that are wanting to fight him, the numbers will be there. Because it's Jake Paul and they'll spin the marketing, the narrative. If it's, if it's Bellew or Carl Froch and Jake Paul's fans don't know who they are, because they're not boxing people and because they boxed like a decade, seven years ago, whatever, 
and they're not relevant in boxing terms now. They won't know who they are. The spin and the marketing that Jake Paul and his team will put on will make them. No, and the, the, the views will come. Everybody in boxing will tune in because they knew Carl Frotch and Tony Bell are, and they'll be looking forward to them smashing Jake Paul to bits and shutting him up. So the numbers for the next one, if you pick someone like that, will still be up there. It'll be massive. If he then lets to, please God, it doesn't happen, and, I, and it can't happen, but a Berta BF or a Daniel Dubois, Jake Paul's fans and Jake Paul's people that don't know Daniel Dubois and, and Berta BF are going to, uh, are going to, you know, watch the fight for Jake Paul. Jake Paul's been spinning about, oh, it's the heavyweight champion of the world. It's heavyweight. It's real to Daniel Dubois chinning everywhere left, right, and centre. Or Berta BF chinning everywhere left, right, and centre. Undisputed, the man of box. So they'll think he's even more of a god going into the fight. And everybody in boxing will tune in to watch Daniel Dubois or Berta BF Absolute, absolutely starts Jay Paul. So the numbers are going to be there again. So he's cracked it. He's used Tyson's name to get in the door with Netflix and on and, and get everybody, everybody wound up in boxing and everybody fucking lauding him in, in YouTube world. So he's clever, mate. He's clever. He's, he's yeah, and I just, I, I don't know. It's just, I, I hope, I just hope he, I hope he, it, it wouldn't be an issue if he, like every other prospect, fought actual real fighters coming through, you know, in these embryonic stages. And he actually fought, even journeyman fighters, I'm not bothered, but if he fought fighters, but it's a basketball or it's a fucking American football or it's a fucking retired MMA fighter or whatever. And then he fights Tommy Fury, who, He's just a prospect who, obviously, in a different space, is not. Again, look at what he's doing next. He's fighting in a in a misfits thing. He he understands what he is, so he's not shying off about I'm going to be world champion in two years or whatever like that. He's fought him a legit boxer, and he's got beat. But then look at how he's come back and who he's picked. And if he pick if he if it was boxing boxers. And call it and saying, I'm going to end up doing this. And then you can kind of go, all right, you know, every prospect needs to be confident. But he's not, the, you know, biggest name on his record is a mammoth name, but it was 58 years old. And then, to, you know, to, to say that you beat this man, that black man, oh, no. I, what part of me wants, wants somebody legit to absolutely do a demolition job on him? But the other side of me is, do you know what? I'd like a, 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 yeah, a former fighter to do a job because I wouldn't want him to get the opportunity that so many fighters have, have work, are working hard for, have worked hard for and don't get an opportunity. But then again, it's the business side. I understand the business side. It's, it's, just, it's just where we are today. It's, yeah, it is. Dave, away from that main event on Friday... On the undercard, we saw the Taylor Serrano to rematch an incredibly close fight once again, an all action packed fight. What did you make of it? Yeah, and do you know what? Just just reverting back, fair play to Jake Paul. The, the fighters are on his undercards, the exposure, the money that they're earning. It wouldn't be happening without him. So again, when you're not involved in what you can you can set, but for those involved, it's 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 brilliant and. And when you see Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano absolutely go at it and lay it all on the line, and it was, you know, it was brutal, it was vicious, it was like it just a hard, hard fight. Fair play, they got paid absolute shitloads and had an unbelievable audience watching them. You know, they, so if you're if you're wanting boxing to deliver in front of such an audience that it had. That was a good advert. That was a good advert. If so, if sixty million was watching the main event, but only forty million were watching Amanda Serrano and 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 Katie Taylor, that forty million can only think, oh, canal. That was a good fight. That forty million, the percentage of that, how many how many young girls are now 
you know, maybe go into a boxing gym because on the back of that fight. And that's how it does work because I, I wanted to box for a long time. And then I remember it was the Ben Eubank first fight. That was it. I'm going. And and that I think that was on the Sunday. I'm sure that was a Sunday night show. And I walked into a boxing gym the next day. Well, I know I looked for the boxing gym the next day. I didn't actually get uh, and I was looking at I was looking at Shy Green and then somebody told me that Brendan's gym was in Winkerbank. So it was a two so two days later I started boxing. So it does happen. That's what people do. They get you get inspired or you know, just get that final push. No, I'm going. And that that fight of of protected so many people to start boxing, so many girls to start boxing. So it's good, it's good for sport. And the fight itself was incredible. Really, I don't buy into this where it's a robbery. I thought it was a close fight, I'll be honest with you. I thought it was a close fight. And when the scorecards came out by one round, I think all three scorecards were, were one round. And I remember thinking, who's got it? Don't know who's got it. And it went to Katie Taylor. So it's not a robbery. If it had gone to a, a Amanda Serrano, I, I would have said the same thing. It's not a robbery. I just thought it was a really good fight. It was very, very close. Um, Dave, on Saturday, we saw Chris Bellum Smith fall short against Zerdo Ramirez in his attempt to unify uh, two cruiserweight totals. Uh, what did you make of that and how tough of a man is Chris Bellum Smith? Fucking hell, man. He's nails. He's nails. He is he's unbelievably tough. I mean, I, I what obviously I've seen him coming through, but then I remember that I really like start not that I didn't respect him, but I think I underrated him until I was I was doing commentary on a show where he boxed Tommy McCarthy. But I wasn't doing that, I wasn't calling that fight, but I was sat on the table, so I'm re I'm dead close to the ring. And just seeing him up close, just how physical he is and, and how he made that work for himself and how, you know, how strong he was. I was like, yeah, he's a lot, a lot harder to beat than what I thought. Um, and then obviously he's gone on to be world champion. He's, he's, he's achieved, you know, he's achieved his dream basically. Um, but the other night, I just felt as though maybe, I don't know, maybe he, I'm not saying he did, but kind of had this impression, this aura about him where it felt as though because Zerdo's coming up in coming up from the weights below, I feel as though and to look at Zerdo, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look particularly strong. And how many big strong Mexicans do you have at that sort of weight? Um, I think maybe perhaps he thought that his his assets would be way too much for Zerdo. And I think he got off to a good start in round one. And then I think round two, if I remember rightly, I remember watching it and saying, it's Zerdo just nailing him to the body. It was like it was ripping in some really good body shots. And I thought, yeah, because we're on a group with the lads in the gym. And I'm like, keep an eye on this. Like, like the, the body shot is going to take a lot out of him. And I think two rounds of that, round two and three, and then you could see Philip Smith was like feeling it. You know, and, 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 I think that was the key. Zerdo's body punching was fantastic, was really good. And, he, you know, he was, he was, he, 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 he boxed really, really well, Zerdo. He wasn't loading up on shots. He knew perhaps, he, you know, he weren't going to take um, Bill and Smith out with one shot, but he was working, going to the body, then going back up to the head and cashing up high, rocking his head back. Um, and yeah, it was, it was pretty one sided, to be fair. Next week in Birmingham, Dave, Sonny Edwards, Galawi fight, amateur rivals, now pro rivals. Right. Um, who do you favour? Oh, good fight. It's a really good fight. I don't. I, do you know what? I don't know because you know what a big part of it is, and it, it's the whole. Um, I just because it's a new thing and you don't know. I I rate Grant Smith as a coach, and and also as a bit of a. Um, not even a common influence, but but just a good influence in in terms of keeping fighters, you know, in in check as in doing what they need to be doing. Um in a fight. Um and I don't know. I, I don't 
don't know how that's going to be. I always think, you know, when you when you you move camps to go straight into a big fight is a is a tough um, a tough ask because it's new face, new you know ways you know ways of working. Um, it's always a strange thing when you come when you use somebody for years and then you go back to the corner and it's a different face. You know, it's even just down to that the whole you know. Preparing the chain room is different. Everything it's, it does when you when you're used to a certain way it is different. But having said that, Sonny's an unbelievable talent, and um, I think his skill set, his movement, everything is there to cause Yafai loads of problems. And the one thing about Yafai is he's, he's a beast, and he's you know he's he's, he's done done amazing. But he's not he's not for anyone like Sonny yet. Um. And he gets it. It does get it on the way in. Now, Sonny don't really hit hard, but if it was just a case about oh you've got it hard enough, then it'd been it'd been walked through well before. You know, he he, he wouldn't have got out at domestic level because he's fought some he's fought some punches. He's fought you know then he, when he stepped up he's you know to to world level he's fought some punches and some people that just walk forward and look to grind you down, not get anywhere near him. You know so. I think if he's at his best, then I think Sonny Edwards. Because I think when he fought Bam, he, if, and you know, and I don't know the ins and outs, but he changed his style. He stood, he stood in front of Bam, and I don't know whether he was trying to be exciting and um, or I don't know, beat him, beat Bam at his own game, sort of thing. I don't know. Um, or maybe may, maybe you just didn't listen to Grant, and then that maybe that's why they end up parting ways. I don't I don't know because sometimes you know it, it, it comes to that point. I remember I remember with Naz with with Brendan, he just got to a point where he stopped listening, and it's like when if you're not going to listen, even though you think oh well you shouldn't leave that that court, but if you're not going to listen to him, there's no point in being there. There's no point in that dynamic, you know, staying together. Um, but I don't know. I'm just staying from the outside looking in. Um, but if if Sonny's at his best with his angles and his moves and his sharpness, then I kind of lean towards Sonny, I think. Um, but it's such a good fight because Yafa is he's, he's, he's very good. He is very good. But maybe maybe it's just maybe maybe it's just too soon. Maybe you know just because you're a fantastic amateur and Olympian and everything doesn't mean that that you can get not everybody can get to the top level of you know world level in the pro game without that kind of experience but it's just a great fight so i could be wrong and and you know i i, I don't know i just I, I, if sunny is at his best i'll lean towards him if he's not at his best then i can see yafa you know getting to the body i, I think yafa should be just be targeting the body anyway um, and just slowing Sonny down and, and, and grinding him down that way. Um, but that's what I, I see would happen if, if Sonny's not at his best, if he's not 100% fit, if he's not prepared properly. Um, but it's such a good fight, and I can't wait to see it. Just to squeeze it before we time out in about four minutes, Dave, Usyk Fury 2, do you have a confident pick for the rematch? Um... I don't know because I don't know what either fighter's got left. I'll be honest here. Just, just, to, just to put it as it is, I don't think Fury's got much left. But I also think since the move up to heavyweight, just unless you've done it, unless you've been hit off of guys that are bigger than you, you, you might not agree with what I'm saying. But even just getting whacked around the shoulders, the body, it takes so much out of you when you're in with guys that are a lot bigger than you. And he's having to do it consistently in sparring and in fights at heavyweight. I just look at him and I just think, you know, there's it. I remember with Bellew, the injuries he was accumulating as it comes, you know, as his career started winding down and he got into the big fights. But the injuries, his last four fights, he went in with really bad injuries. Um, and it's just the wear and tear. And I look at Usyk and I think that last fight was hard. He's had, you know, even the AJ fight, I know he's, he's, he's you know, the second AJ fight was quite hard. Um, he's taking a lot of, you know, a lot of hammer from these big guys. Um, so I don't know what he's got left. And he's getting old. What is he, 36, 37? Um, so for me, it depends what Usyk's got left. 
if Busic still got got it left, got got you know still as he is, then I, I think Usyk again. Um, but it's intriguing because both fighters now I think are on that are on that slide, and so we'll see. We've got what left. Squeeze but I might change your mind next time he speaks to me, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, to squeeze one more, we got about two minutes left. Uh, Benavidez and Morel in January. Oh, What's happening? What a good fight. That's a fight that's going to probably in danger going under the radar. But what a good fight! If you don't know who David Morel is, go and watch him. Watch him on YouTube. Very very good fight. Having said that, both fighters for me the best performances have been at super middleweight. Morel at super middleweight, unbelievable talent. His fighter, I think, is he had just had one fighter yeah. at lighter. And he was like, mm, okay, not the same man. So I don't know. But Morel's a talent. Benavidez is very, very good, unbelievable fighter. That's just a really good fight. I can't wait. I can't wait to see that fight. Who do I think wins it? Right now, I don't know. Um, because it's because it, it's the new weight division. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'd I'd have to go back and watch a bit more what he's doing both. Well, Dave, listen, I appreciate you jumping on. I'm going to leave you to enjoy the rest of your day now. Um, thank you for speaking to me and good luck on Friday night. Nice one, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers.